for joining us on the broadcast, sharing all those updates with our viewers. We're going to leave it there and shift our focus to some developments that are taking place in the Middle East. Now, Israel marks the first anniversary of Hamas's deadly attacks. On October 7th, 2023, Hamas had fired thousands of rockets into Israel before the group's terrorists breached the Gaza border. Hamas terrorists attacked and went on a rampage at a music festival which killed almost 1,200 people, injuring hundreds of others and taking over 250 hostages. Since then, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has declared a seven-front war. Cut to October 7th, 2024, tensions have escalated in Middle East after Iran had launched 180-plus missiles at Israel after Israel had eliminated Hezbollah's top commander, Nasrallah. Now, Israel forces have bombarded Hezbollah targets in Lebanon and attacked what it called a Hamas command center in Gaza hospital at uh, the country, in fact, marks a one-year anniversary of its fighting with Hamas. Israel forces have expanded their offensive and uh, have continued airstrikes in Gaza, Lebanon and Iran. Ahead of one, the, in fact, the one-year anniversary has been marked at this point of time. Israel has uh, attacked, in, in fact, launched attacks in Lebanon's Beirut in retaliation. Hezbollah has launched almost... 130 projectiles on Israel's third largest city, Haifa, which has injured 10 people and damaged several buildings and properties. In Gaza, Israel, Israelis, uh, the military has in fact targeted a school and a mosque that has uh, been converted, in, that was in fact converted into the shelters and destroyed Al Qasa Hospital. Darren Rockman, CEO of Gold Rock Investment Manager, is live with us at this point of time. Thank you so much for joining us on News X. Now, you know, from 7th October 2023 up until now, now that 365 days have culminated, it, this war has now expanded. In your assessment, what is the future? Is this going to keep on protracting? Well, let me just start by saying this is a very sad day uh, here in Israel. Um, as you say, we mark the one year anniversary. We still have 101 hostages held by Hamas in the Gaza Strip that they refuse, despite our attempts to negotiate, uh, they refuse to release. And we are still fighting a multi front war for the very survival of the state of Israel. Uh, we are being attacked unprovoked in the south by Hamas, in the north by Hezbollah. Uh, we are being attacked by Iraq from our east. We are being attacked by, as you said correctly, 180 ballistic missiles sent to us in the space of 12 minutes by Iran. And we are being attacked by the Houthis, um, people from whom we had no uh, fight uh, most of these countries we have absolutely no quarrel with. There is no border dispute that we have with Iran. We don't even share a border with Iran. We have no border dispute with Lebanon. We have no border dispute with the Houthis or even with Iraq. Countries far away from us. We are in a fight which has been coordinated and directed by one group, and that is the Iranian regime, which is a fundamentalist totalitarian regime which is bent on the destruction of the state of Israel, the only Jewish state uh, in the world. And uh, we are fighting to survive, and we are fighting and we are winning. And from our perspective and the perspective of people here on this really very tragic day, we continue to feel that we have no choice. And so when you ask me, what does the future bring? I believe that the future will bring a better, quieter Middle East once this is all over. But that's only going to happen once Israel and hopefully our allies around the world, the United States and other countries in Europe and in and India, show the world and show Iran that we will not tolerate uh, indiscriminate attacks on our civilians. We will not tolerate the type of depraved 
rape and pillage that we had on the 7th of October on this day last year, exactly at this moment. You know, the, mm. I, I was uh, in my bed at uh, this time. It's now 6.40 in the morning. And exactly 12 months ago, as I was lying in bed, I started to hear rumblings in the sky. Uh, we can hear uh, Gaza. It's not that far away from my home, probably about 70 kilometers. And we live on the top of a hill. And I could start to hear the rumbling of missiles being fired. We had no idea what was going on. It only became clear many, many hours later uh, but what had uh, actually begun. And this was an unprovoked attack by Hamas on Israel. It was the single worst day in Jewish history since the Holocaust. More Jews killed on that day than any time uh, since the uh, Nazis were defeated. And uh, that day served to remind us all that we are, in fact, uh, fighting for our very survival. Right, absolutely. Uh, you know, again, 1,200 Israelis have unfortunately been killed in the last one year. And at this point of time, out of the 250 hostages, 101 are still being held. With that yes, there, yeah. you know, what is the demand that one would then raise to the Israeli uh, government, to Benjamin Netanyahu, what is it that you would like to demand? Well, you know, we expect, this country expects that our government um, does two things. The first thing is that it ensures the security and the safety of the 10 million people that live here. And those are Jews, Arabs, Christians, people of all faiths. Um, that live in this country and our security and safety is one thing that we demand of our government and we expect of our government and the second thing is the return of our hostages which we demand of Hamas um, which we say to them you are holding children you are holding women you are holding people that are now ill and uh, we know these treat people are being mistreated we know that from the hostages some of which were released in uh, previous uh, deals, some of them which were uh, managed to be recovered by Israel, including most recently a Muslim man who was being kept by Hamas um, in the tunnels under Gaza. And um, we expect them to be released and our government to do the most they can in order to make sure that that happens. Right, absolutely. Now, you know, again, cross-border strikes are being anticipated as we speak. With that, of course, there in the picture, uh, what is then, you know, the message that you want to put out to uh, the nations worldwide? What is the message that you want to put out? The, the message to the world is that this is not only Israel's fight. Look, um, Iran is a destabilizing influence everywhere that they operate. They destabilize countries. They destabilize the entire region. Uh, this is a fundamentalist theocratic um, regime who only want to build, bring death and destruction and their fanatical version of Islam to everywhere around the world. And if we don't stop them, they will not stop at Israel. It will be Europe, it will be the whole region, it will be India, anywhere that their tentacles can reach. And so Israel is on the front line of a war for the values that we all hold dear, uh, the values of liberal democracy. Uh, we hold a dear here in, a dear in Israel, we know you do in India, and we know our friends in America and in other places around the world do as well. And Israel needs to be given the opportunity by the international community, despite all the difficulties of running a war, uh, despite the death and the destruction, which inevitably and unfortunately comes about uh, when uh, people have to fight for their survival. But we expect the world to understand that we are doing this as the front line for global democracies in their fight against this menace, against uh, the Ayatollah Khamenei and he is his crazy band of fanatics. And the world needs to give us that support. They need to give us the time, the backing, and frankly, the armaments in order to get the job done.
Mr. Rockman, I was, you know, reading a report which said that at this point of time, 80 percent of the commercial facilities in Israel have been damaged, 68 percent of the road networks have collapsed, 68 percent of the cropland has been dan damaged, you know, these are just to us right now, I mean, we just want to understand from you what is Israel like right now? What is the sentiment of the people? What are the difficulties that people okay. are facing for the benefit of our audience? So I think we need to divide this up. Um, firstly, you should understand that we have a functioning economy. We have a functioning society. Um, there are parts of the country which have been bombarded and destroyed. Okay, the north of Israel currently is a part where you simply cannot go. It is way too dangerous. Um, the uh, uh, terrorists, the Hezbollah terrorists, have been uh, put, uh, throwing rockets, launching rockets at that part of the country for the last 12 months. They started one day after uh, Hamas on the 8th of October of last year, and they continued uh, for the last 12 months. We are trying to stop this by undermining it, and that requires us to be active across Lebanon and Syria in uprooting the, um, the terror network that they have embedded amongst the civilian population in Lebanon. Uh, there are parts of uh, the south which have also been terribly, terribly damaged, the kibbutzim and the cities around Gaza, which were attacked unprovoked, uh, where some of the worst depraved actions of mankind happened on the 7th of October last year, parts of their, of their have not uh, uh, been able to be resettled yet. Uh, they're still destroyed, burnt out. It's a, it's a very sad thing. Um, but that said, uh, the rest of the country operates. Uh, we have a functioning economy. We have a functioning high-tech economy. The road network uh, works. Uh, I drove from my home in the center of the country north to Haifa yesterday to attend the funeral of a soldier who was killed by Hezbollah terrorists uh, on a Wednesday of last week, uh, a very brave young man who unfortunately uh, was killed. And I can tell you that the highways work, and the, uh, the country works, uh, there are restaurants, and people go out, uh, life is a sort of a normal, but it's only a sort of a normal for two reasons. Firstly, because uh, we are a small country, all of us have friends, children, children of friends serving in the army and uh, undergoing terrible difficulties in having to fight this war. And secondly, because for every single Israeli, there is a huge hole in our heart uh, for those 101 hostages who still are in the tunnels under Gaza, who still have not been released, who are still being subject to torture and uh, starvation and illness um, at the hands of these disgraceful and disgusting terrorists. And so even though we run our country as if it was normal, it's only a sort of a normal, because we at the same time as doing that, trying to maintain our normalcy, we are fighting the hardest and longest war of this country's existence, and we have these hostages who still are still not home. Mr. Rockman, um, thank you so much for joining us. You know, it sounds, again, it sounds very difficult to be there in that situation, would be extremely uh, difficult. But thank you so much for speaking to us on NewsX and giving us an understanding on the demands, on the situation. And uh, I hope you and your family and your friends are all safe amidst these attacks. Thank you so much. All right. Uh,